Hi, I'm Caleb Giddings from GunNuts Media. Today's video we're going to throw back to a previous video we did. If you've been subscribing to the channel for a while, you probably saw my video on appendix carry, about drawing, and most importantly, reholstering the gun, where we talked about how to safely reholster at the AIWB position so that you don't flag your femoral artery or your, well, your junk. Because whenever you post an appendix carry video, the first or second comment is some knucklehead being like, you're gonna shoot your dick off, which you're not, we covered that. But today I wanted to talk about something else and I wanted to talk about drawing from the appendix carry position. And we're gonna start with the gun unconcealed and then we're going to work towards with the gun concealed. The first thing I'm going to do in this video though is because I will be dry firing, so I'm going to take this live ammunition that I have, pointing my gun in a safe direction. You can't see it, but over there is a solid brick wall, so nothing's going to go through that. So with the gun pointed in a safe direction, I remove all live ammo. Wait, see, so you can see down the mag well. There it is. I remove all live ammo from this scenario so that the gun's pointed in a safe, so that when I do dry fire, there won't be any issues. Also, for those of you that are wondering, because I get this comment on almost every video that has that thing in the background, that is not a bong, it is a rifle full of tequila, it was a gift from my brother when I came back from active duty last year. No, I haven't had any of it yet, I'm saving it for a special occasion when I want to, I don't know, forget how to feel things. Anyway, we get all that covered? Good, all right, so today, we're talking about drawing from the appendix position. Now you see a lot of video. One thing is that one of the things that bothers me, and the reason I'm making this video, is people really like to make the draw complicated. And I get that as an instructor. When I teach classes, I understand that you need to sometimes make the draw. I don't want to say make it complicated, but you need to break it down into steps. The problem is people will then break it down into like. 62 steps. I was literally in a class once as a student, not as an instructor, where the presentation from the holster was start with your hands relaxed at your sides, then one, two, three, four, five, six. That's too much. That is, that is doing too much to get your gun out of the holster. Similarly, I don't think you can take a new student and teach the, and just be like, draw your gun and point it at the target. Because when you do that, you end up with people doing crazy crap where they'll bring their gun out of their holster and they'll scoop it towards the target or they'll flag their support hand or do all kinds of silly nonsense. So you have to have a happy medium. And I've been working through this for a while and I've finally kind of gotten to where I teach a three count draw. So we're gonna break down my three count draw here real quickly and hopefully keep this video pretty short. So, a three count draw from an unconcealed position. All right, so I, my weapon's not concealed right now. This is going to be our three count draw. Three count draw, unconcealed position. One, I'm going to establish my master grip on my weapon and I'm gonna bring my support hand up into my chest. Your support hand does not have to be right in the middle of your sternum. It can be here, here, here even. I don't know why you put it up that high, but somewhere you, I would say somewhere in between the top of your goon hand and your nipples. That's a decent place for your support hand to be. So one is that, all right? I've established my master grip. My finger is safely indexed out here. My thumb is up so that when I draw the gun, it can naturally slide on top of the safety of the 1911. One. Two is I'm going to bring the gun all the way out and join my hands together, all right? And that can happen down here. It can happen up here. It doesn't really matter. Three, I'm going to drive the gun straight to the target. That's it. Somewhere in three, if I have made the conscious decision to shoot the gun when it reaches full extension, I'm gonna knock the safety off and probably put my finger on the trigger so that when the gun's out here and my sights are lined up, I can actually fire. So, let's go over that again. One, two, three. Not complicated, right? Super duper easy. We're trying to make things as simple as possible. Eliminate as many extraneous steps from this as you possibly can because people get confused. One, you're gonna put your hand up here on your chest, grab your gun. Two, 
You're going to bring your hands together, establish your master grip. And I'm not actually fully established in my master grip here at two. I don't really do that until I finish extending the gun all the way out to three because I'm going to take my support hand and it's going to close in on top of the gun as it moves towards the target. The nice thing about this draw is that if I need to shoot from two, I absolutely can. I can just clamp down on this gun and shoot from retention if necessary. But this is, and something I wanna talk about real quick, this draw is an ideal circumstances draw, all right? I'm not drawing while I'm trying to fight somebody off my body. I'm not defending against a gun grab or anything like that. This is an ideal circumstances. Target is outside of arm's reach. I am drawing my gun to engage them with precise aimed fire. Ideal circumstances draw. You can train for more, um, you can train for less ideal circumstances, certainly, but I don't necessarily think I would recommend that until you're actually good at doing this. I've seen a lot of jacked up draws in classes I've taught out on ranges, and I still mess my draw, especially when I'm doing what I'm about to show you, which is drawing from concealment. So, drawing from concealment, B to B to B. All right. Now my gun is concealed, okay? So my draw doesn't really change. What I'm going, the only thing that's different is number one is now going to be lift up my concealment garment and establish my master grip. That's it. That's the only difference. It's one, two, three. Nothing really changes drawing from concealment as opposed to drawing from open other than I'm grabbing the bottom of my shirt and I'm getting a really good grip on it too. Like I'm not going to just, uh, I don't want to just like stick a finger up there. And one thing you don't want to do, and this drives me nuts. So let's say you're an Instagram famous douchebag who posts videos of himself doing like the speed rock technique or something like that. And you're just trying to clear your concealment garment just high enough to get your gun out so you can draw a little bit quicker and do your dumbass speed rock, whatever. Don't do that. And there's a really good reason why you shouldn't do that, all right? If I only clear my concealment garment up to here, when I draw my gun, I can foul my thumb on my cover garment and that's gonna mess up my ability to get my gun out on target and get those accurate hits, all right? Clear your freaking concealment garment. Get that crap up and away from your gun so that when you actually do need to draw and put in work, you're not gonna foul your draw up because your concealment garment's in the way. I know, crazy talk, but it is what it is. So, we're gonna go over this one more time. The draw from concealment. One, two, three. That's it. Easy peasy, right? So, when we work this in dry fire, if you're developing your draw, break it down into those steps. One, two, three. Work on that until you get to the point where you can just draw at a casual pace and bring the gun where you want it to be. This is why I recommend dry firing with a target, by the way, with something that you can aim at. Because if all you do is do dry fire reps where you just slam the gun out at full extension and you're not really aiming it at anything, you're not building your ability to actually draw the gun to a threat. You're just building your ability to throw it out in front of you. So practice aiming it in at a target. If you wanna shoot it, not shoot, shoot it, but if you wanna dry fire it at the target, that's fine too. Usually what I'll do when I'm practicing, when I'm, I'll start warming up, I'll just kind of do some casual draws to try to make sure that my muscle memory is good to go because I don't want to be able to, I don't want to reach for the gun in a situation where I need it and have it not be there, have my hand go to the wrong place. So we're gonna do some casual reps, all right, where we're drawing the gun at a medium speed. And then as I'm practicing, I'm gonna work up towards trying to move my body parts as fast as I can so I can get the gun out even quicker. Because ultimately, and here's why this is important, this is what I'm gonna wrap the video up on. Well, hang on. Again, the three count draw from concealment. Hands relaxed at sides, one. I've established my master grip, cleared my concealment garment. Two, guns up, clear of everything. Three, guns out on target, I'm ready to fire. The reason a fast draw is important, and the reason you should train this in dry fire 
with a timer and in live fire with a timer is because having a fast draw in a self-defense situation allows you to regain the initiative. It allows you to retake initiative via speed and surprise and violence of action. If some dude comes around the corner with a knife or even with a gun and he's like, give me your wallet or give me your car keys, the ability to suddenly produce a gun in your hand and have it ready to fire and fire accurate shots quickly is a huge advantage. And if you tell me that that's wrong, you're stupid. You're just dumb. You cannot tell me that there isn't, that being able to draw and accurately, accurately fire six precisely aimed shots into a group this big at 10 yards in under three seconds is not an awesome self-defense skill. Tell me it isn't. Go ahead. You can make your case for that in the comments. I would actually love to hear it. Okay, now that I'm done ranting, that's pretty much it for this video. If you have questions about the draw, the way I do it, my three, the reason why I use a three count draw as opposed to a four or more count draw, please feel free to leave me a question down in the comments below. Make sure you subscribe to my channel. I do new videos when I feel like them, but usually like once a week. I'm Caleb Giddings. Thanks for watching.